you don't remember me at all. No. We've talked a bunch of times. I'm sure we have. Yeah. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies that you have to watch twice. There was an accident. You wouldn't tell me anything else, but that was your accident, Reed. I just know it was. You're waiting for a train. A train that will take you far away. Oh, never mind, it's all academic. Oh. She's going to make a heck of a dinner party story. For this list, we'll be looking at movies that are best appreciated on repeat viewings, be it because of heady concepts, a complex plot, or just having a lot of moving parts. A lot of these films involve elaborate twists, so take this as your spoiler warning. What movie left you scratching your head the first time you saw it? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Joker a film set in Gotham City with no Batman, it seemed like an odd choice on paper. But Joaquin Phoenix and director Todd Phillips turned in a truly remarkable origin story for the Clown Prince of Crime. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? A unique vision of the character, Joker is a gritty and grounded story set in a world seemingly devoid of heroes, super or otherwise. For all its realism, however, it sure knows how to make you second guess what's happening on screen. It's been a rough few weeks, Murray. <laughs> Ever since I killed those three Wall Street guys. Where does real life end and the delusions of Arthur Fleck begin? Watch as closely as you like. This film prefers to keep at least a few cards hidden up its sleeve. Regardless, it makes for a fascinating exploration of obsession, alienation, and fantasy. <laughs> Number 19, Cloud Atlas. This is the Cloud Atlas sextet. Directed by the Wachowskis and Tom Tykwer, this adaptation of David Mitchell's novel is quite the mind bender. I call it the Cloud Atlas sextet. Cloud Atlas tells six different intertwining tales across multiple eras with the help of an ensemble cast led by Tom Hanks. It's only during this sci-fi flicks epilogue that it's revealed that Tom Hanks' sixth character, Zachary Bailey, has been telling the different stories to his grandchildren in the mysterious future. Oh, if I were to die, just as well, my yawning is done. While this explains why each actor plays different characters in the film, the conclusion sheds new light on all you've just seen and makes you want to watch it all over again to make sure you catch everything. Oh, never mind, it's all academic. Oh, this is gonna make a heck of a dinner party story. Number 18, Scream. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Wes Craven's cult classic is not just another slasher flick. Scream centers around Nev Campbell's character, Sydney, who's being pursued by the mysterious and elusive ghost face serial killer. Do you like scary movies, Sydney? The movie deserves another go around just because of its climax, as knowing who the murderer is makes the original kills even better. Surprise, Sydney. The film is also an example of mid 90s meta humor, constantly making references to itself and its framework. How come Jamie Lee Curtis is in all of his movies? She's the scream queen. Heck, you could make a drinking game out of it. One drink for every meta joke. Actually, don't do that. You definitely won't last until the end. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back, because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. <laughs> Number 17, Enemy. Everyone has a lookalike somewhere in the world. He had the same voice. He looks exactly like you. In this film, Jake Gyllenhaal's character Adam seeks his identical lookalike after he spots him in a small role in a rented flick. Said doppelganger is named Anthony Clare and is also played by Gyllenhaal. Maybe we're brothers. We're not, we're not brothers. We're not brothers. The actor masterfully portrays both men, jumping from different personalities with ease. By the end of it all, you realize that the film deserves a second viewing, but this time from the point of view of Anthony instead. Why'd you come looking for me? I don't, I don't know. Maybe then you'll be able to comprehend what the hell is going on with all the spiders. Helen? Number 16, The Others. Now she thinks the house is haunted. Our next entry is as mysterious as they come. Initially, The Others seems to be about Grace Stewart and her family being tormented by shady servants and supernatural occurrences. 
Cut to the twist, Nicole Kidman's character and her family are actually the ones who are supernatural, i.e. dead. In fact, Kidman took her children's lives and then her own out of grief, and they're now haunting the current occupants of the house. Only finding this out at the end means that watching the horror thriller a second time will completely change how you see the others. Maybe you're a ghost too. Probably not though. Young Lydia said the very same thing when she realized the three of us were dead. And that was the last time she ever spoke. Number 15, Shutter Island. All I know is it's a mental hospital. But the criminally insane. During most of your first viewing, Shutter Island seems like a typical detective story. The film's original premise follows Leonardo DiCaprio and Mark Ruffalo as U.S. Marshals, who investigate a disappearance at the mysterious Ashcliff Hospital on Shutter Island. But it's later revealed that DiCaprio's character is actually the hospital's 67th patient, Andrew Latis, and the events of the film are tests from the doctors to try and cure his insanity. I told you not to come in here. I told you. This admission drastically changes how everything and everyone in the film is perceived and definitely warrants a second watch. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? Number 14, Us. Evil doppelgangers, mysterious underground tunnels, Tim Heidecker in a half serious role. There's a lot going on in this movie. Wait, two Tim Heideckers in the same movie? Now that's enough to make your head spin. In the follow-up to his critically acclaimed horror debut, Get Out filmmaker Jordan Peele ups both the weird factor and the thematic complexity. Oh, there's a family. Child scared of a family? A billionaire's family. Us is many things, stylish, funny, and terrifying. But easy to understand is not on that list. It's not clear at this time if or how these people are connected to the attacks. What is that? They're forming what looks it's like them. Sure, the basic plot is simple enough. Evil doppelgangers rise from their subterranean world to murder and take the place of their surface-dwelling counterparts. But what does it all mean? Who are these people and what's up with those tunnels? Once you find out, it's time for a rewatch. Everything had to be perfect. I didn't just need to kill you. I needed to make a statement. Number 13, 12 Monkeys. This film will have you confused, but also marveling at its brilliance. May I call you James? James. No one ever calls me that. In this sci-fi flick from Terry Gilliam, Bruce Willis's character James Cole has to travel back in time to prevent an apocalyptic viral terrorist attack. Very few of us here are actually mentally ill. I'm not saying you're not mentally ill. For all I know, you're <laughs> crazy as a loon. However, by the end of it, we learn that the future can't be changed, and Willis's trip seems to have been futile. Watch it. On the next viewing, though, it's a blast trying to remember who knows what information and what's true or just a red herring. Just don't get stuck in a time loop. <laughs> Number 12, Interstellar. We must confront the reality of interstellar travel. We must reach far beyond our own lifespans. This sci-fi film is Christopher Nolan's epic follow-up to Inception. The film follows a group of astronauts, with the leads portrayed by Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway, as they try to discover a new planet to colonize to save humanity. Our three prospects are at the edge of what might sustain human life. Why does this require a rewatch, you ask? Well, for one, it's a much smoother viewing once you've got your head around the science, especially that whole time dilation thing. How do you know? Because the bulk beams are closing the Tesseract. To make it scientifically plausible, Nolan worked alongside famed theoretical physicist Kip Thorne. Then there's the Tesseract and its architects in the finale. Plus, there's the sheer beauty of the space adventure, which is just a pleasure to re-experience. They're us. What I've been doing for Murph, they're doing for me. Number 11, Jacob's Ladder. Thanks to Lewis Carroll and Alice in Wonderland, down the rabbit hole is a common way of saying that someone has crossed over into a surreal state or strange perspective. <laughs> what is happening? Get me out of here. There is no out of here. You've been killed. Well, we'd like to suggest climbing Jacob's ladder as a potential substitute, because this movie is seriously messed up. 
Released in 1990 and starring Tim Robbins, Jacob's Ladder is a psychological thriller slash horror film that takes you to the very darkest corners of the human psyche. You're a lucky guy, Jake. You must have friends in high places. Our protagonist, Jacob, is a Vietnam vet who, upon finding himself back home in NYC, is plagued by increasingly strange, violent, and grotesque hallucinations. Jacob's mind is not to be trusted, but we're almost exclusively tied to his perspective, making this one heck of a trip down the rabbit hole. Dream on. God, no. Number 10, Inception. There are few filmmakers who like to make you think quite as much as Christopher Nolan does. Because building a dream from your memory is the easiest way to lose your grasp on what's real and what is a dream. Is that what happened to you? This isn't his first entry on our list, and spoiler, it will not be the last. When Inception was released in 2010, cinema goers could not get enough of it. Sure, the cast is incredible and the action is rock solid, but what really kept people coming back for more was the concept that Nolan put forth. In a dream, you can cheat architecture into impossible shapes. That lets you create closed loops, like the Penrose Steps. We follow our protagonist, Dom Cobb, and his associates into a shared dreaming space. And as the action plays out on multiple levels of the subconscious, it's easy to get a little mixed up. That way, when you look at your totem, you know beyond a doubt that you're not in someone else's dream. Following its release, Inception spawned countless charts and infographics to help people understand the film's complex structure. Number 9. Donnie Darko Because of its emo-slash-goth aesthetic and teen drama, Donnie Darko hasn't always gotten the credit it deserves. Although niche, it's a tightly crafted and thoroughly fascinating film. A sci-fi psychological thriller, the movie follows the titular teen as he attempts to understand some foreboding premonitions. Thanks to an excellent performance by a young Jake Gyllenhaal, it makes for an engaging viewing experience even if you don't fully grasp the plot the first time around. Who is he going to kill, Donnie? I can see you right now! Unafraid of getting into the nitty-gritty of time travel theory, Donnie Darko is the sort of film that reveals something new upon every repeat viewing. I hope that when the world comes to an end, I can breathe a sigh of relief, because there will be so much to look forward to. Number 8. The Usual Suspects Movies come and go. Even those that do well at the box office often fail to leave an enduring mark on pop culture. His name is Verbal. Verbal Kent. Verbal? Yeah. Roger, really. People say I talk too much. But if you say the name Kaiser Soze, many people know exactly what you're talking about. Some of them without ever having seen the film. He saw Kaiser Soze. The epic twist at the end of The Usual Suspects has been referenced in everything from Buffy the Vampire Slayer to Dairy Girls. But in addition to being an iconic moment in movie history, the big reveal at the end of this film also puts everything that you've just watched into a whole new perspective. It's the sort of movie that doesn't just benefit from a repeat viewing, it all but forces you to do so. And like that, he's gone. Number seven, Saw. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. I want to play a game. In the first entry of the Saw franchise, audiences watched in fear as characters Adam Stanheit and Dr. Lawrence Gordon struggled to survive the first Jigsaw Killer game. If you do not kill Adam by six, then Allison and Diana will die. If you've already watched it once, you know that Jigsaw is actually very much present the whole time, just not in a way anyone could have predicted. This makes the film more enjoyable to watch a second time around, as does knowing Dr. Gordon's real fate thanks to Saw 3D. Not to mention, you'll also realize that the bathroom reappears in later films in the franchise. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. But not you. Not anymore. Ah! Ah! Game over. Number 6. Synecdoche, New York whether he's serving as director, screenwriter, or both, Charlie Kaufman's films never fail to confuse and befuddle. What was this here for? Plays. Like theater plays? Mm-hmm. Shakespeare. His 2020 adaptation of I'm Thinking of Ending Things took an already perplexing novel and somehow managed to make it even more opaque. Kaufman has perhaps never been more Kaufman-esque, however, than with Synecdoche, New York. We need to investigate. 
you know, to really discover the essence of each being. It was the filmmaker's directorial debut, and he held nothing back. The film follows a theater director, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, whose obsession with realism pushes his production to evolve into a world of its own. The film places a lot of faith in the audience to keep up with its motifs and metaphysical inquiries. Watching it twice is really the only way. None of us has much time. Sammy, come down! Number 5. The Sixth Sense M. Night Shyamalan's brilliant psychological horror introduced audiences to a boy who can see dead people, and the dedicated child psychologist trying to help him. You are not a freak, okay? If you've been hiding under a rock for over two decades and you don't know the twist, we won't ruin it here. Do you want to tell me something? But suffice to say, there are countless hints throughout, and it takes multiple viewings to notice them. Either way, after watching the end, you won't be able to watch it the same way again. It becomes a different movie, one much spookier, but also more poignant. They don't see each other. They only see what they want to see. They don't know they're dead. Number 4. Mulholland Drive Another director who seems to deal exclusively in head scratchers, David Lynch likes to leave plenty of room for interpretation. Many a viewer had to rush to Google for answers after watching Eraserhead for the first time. If there's one Lynch film that benefits most from a second viewing, however, it's Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive? That's where I was going. The film boasts a star-making performance in Naomi Watts, who plays a young actress hoping to make it big in Los Angeles. After she befriends a woman with amnesia, however, this seemingly grounded tale takes increasingly erratic and disorienting turns. Don't make it be like this. I'm sure. You want me to make this easy for you. Lynch has famously refused to explain the film's true meaning, but repeat viewings will help you decide which of the popular interpretations makes the most sense to you. Number 3. Memento Christopher Nolan more than earns his place on the podium. Pretty much every movie in the director's filmography is an exercise in experimental narrative structure. Do you even know why you're here? Unfinished business. Lenny, let me inform you. Your business here is very much finished. In The Prestige, the entire film is one big magic trick. Dunkirk takes an a-chronological approach that prioritizes character perspective over linear storytelling. Memento, however, the director's second feature, and first to earn him significant attention, remains his greatest feat in terms of narrative structure. Don't believe his lies. The story centers on a man named Leonard who's incapable of forming new memories. Despite his affliction, however, our protagonist remains committed to solving the murder of his wife. Nolan has the action play out across two timelines that are best understood with the help of a chart. You know, I think I'd rather be mistaken for a dead guy than a killer. I might hang on to this for a while. Number 2. 2001 – A Space Odyssey Nowadays, when you watch a film that leaves you puzzled, the internet is there to help. But can you imagine watching 2001 – A Space Odyssey back in 1968? Talk about a movie-going experience that will keep your brain occupied for weeks. The thing is, even today, decades later, with countless think pieces and essays written about it, this hugely influential Stanley Kubrick film continues to generate debate and discussion. Hey. My mind is going. I can feel it. There's actually a Wikipedia page separate from the film entitled Interpretations of 2001 A Space Odyssey. With its beautiful but befuddling final scene and ambiguous imagery throughout, it's inspired many theories, but no definitive answers. But hey, that's Kubrick for ya. After all, this is the same director who gave us The Shining. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Predestination, a fast-paced time travel head scratcher to rival the best of them. If you shoot me, you'll become me. You get it? That's that's how it happens. If you want to break the chain, you have to not kill me. Mr. Nobody, Jared Leto plays a man who lives out multiple lives simultaneously. I wear shorts. I'm nine years old. I 
could run faster than a train. Videodrome, a film that might make you reconsider what you watch on TV. Step the Videodrome, long live the new flesh! <laughs> Holy Motors, watch it again. You'll still be confused by this unnerving fantasy drama. C'était une grande photographe américaine. Elle faisait des photos avec des nains, des géants, des monstres, des photos très très humaines. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pulp Fiction and You know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, and parent? Taking our top spot is every college film major's favorite black comedy. Quentin Tarantino's masterpiece follows a monumental cast featuring the likes of John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, and Bruce Willis in a variety of intertwining stories. This chopper is this? <sighs> Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. If the witty dialogue isn't enough to warrant another viewing, then just attempt to figure out the correct timeline of the film. If that still isn't enough, try to catch all of the pop culture references and bits of trivia sprinkled in. Did you know the Jules Winfield Bible verse is a misquote? You do now. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.